Welcome students, we have been given this question, square root of 5m positive 6, positive root of 3m positive 4 is equal to 2. Now, I know that majority can solve this question, but with regard to understanding the question, there is a, a serious level of ambiguity present in as far as the comprehension of this solution is concerned. So that is the reason I wanted to provide an air of clarification as to the main reason why the solution is the solution for this question. Now having mentioned that, let me just move on. Now this is easily solvable. It can be solved by many different ways. I'm going to show you three ways in particular. So let me rewrite this as 2 is equal to square root of 5m positive 6 positive square root of 3m positive 4. The first observation that you will have to capture here is that on the right hand side you've got radicals. So your objective is to get rid of this if you want to solve. So what I would do is I would be squaring both sides. Now when I square both sides, on the right hand side this is square root of 5m positive 6 positive square root of 3m positive 4 raised to the power of 2. On the left hand side it's 2 squared so this is going to give me 4. Now I am using a positive b raised to the power of 2 which is a squared positive 2ab positive b squared. Now this is going to give me root of 5m positive 6 raised to the power of 2 positive 2 times of square root of 5m positive 6 times root of 3m positive 4 positive square root of 3m positive 4 raised to the power of 2. Now the radical sign and the square gets neutralized giving me 5m positive 6. I'm not going to touch anything of the, the second term. I will just rewrite it as root of 5m positive 6 times root of 3m positive 4. And in this case the radical sign and the square gets cancelled giving me 3m positive 4. So now the 5m and the 3m can be added giving me 8m. The 6 and the 4 can be added giving me 10. Of course the term follows as it is. Root of 5m positive 6 times root of 3m positive 4. Now I can move these to the left side. I already have a 4 here. So I can rewrite this as 4 negative 8m negative 10 is equal to 2 times root of 5m positive 6 times root of 3m positive 4. Now 4 added with negative 10 would give me negative 6 followed by uh, negative 8m is equal to 2 times root of 5m positive 6 times root of 3m positive 4. I can take a 2 out and a negative sign out giving me 3 positive 4 times m is equal to 2 times root of 5m positive 6 times root of 3m positive 4. The 2 and the 2 can be cancelled giving me negative of 3 positive 4m is equal to root of 5m positive 6 times root of 3m positive 4. Now I would like to get rid of this radical sign again. So the only eventuality is to square both sides. So I would be squaring both sides. And if I were to square both sides, the radical sign gets neutralized, giving me 5m positive 6 times 3m positive 4. So on the left hand side the negative sign is raised to the power of 2 so that gets neutralized giving me 3 positive 4 and raised to the power of 2. Now I expand the left side I get 9 4 times 3 12 12 times 2 is 24m positive square of this is going to be 16m squared 
Now, distributive property comes in handy for us. So I would be multiplying 5m with 3m. That would give me 15m squared. I would multiply 5m with 4. That would give me 20m. I would multiply 6 with 3m. That would give me 18m. I would multiply 6 with 4. That would give me 24. Now I can pull in everything to the right hand side or to the right hand uh, left hand side but apparently it seems that the left hand side has got 16 m squared so I'm going to rewrite by pulling all the right hand side term to the left side so this is going to be 16 m squared negative 15 m squared this is one term I got a 24 m and I got a 20 m and a 18 m so that would give me negative 38 m followed by I got a 9 I need to bring this 24 that's going to be negative 24 this is equal to 0 now this one would give me uh, m squared now I've got a 24 and uh, 38 so that's going to be negative 14 m and then I got a 9 and a, a 9 negative 24 9 negative 24 would give me negative 15 is equal to 0 this can be easily factorized so I can rewrite this as m negative 15 times m positive 1 is equal to 0. From your m negative 15 is equal to 0. From your m positive 1 is equal to 0. From your m is equal to 15. And m is equal to negative 1. So we got the values for m. Now we are given this. Let me use this uh, space. Now what are we given? We are given root of 5m positive 6 positive square root of 3m positive 4 is equal to 2 and I get the value of m to be negative 1 and 15. So I need to find out which of these will be the solution for our system. Now foremost I am going to substitute m is equal to negative 1 so that would give me 5 times of negative 1 positive 6 positive root of 3 times of negative 1 positive 4 is equal to 2 this will give me root of 1 and this is going to give me root of 1 root of 1 is 1 root of 1 is 1 1 added with 1 will give me 2 so left hand side is equal to right hand side so m is equal to negative 1 is clearly a solution now let me substitute m is equal to 15 obviously m is equal to 15 is also a solution of the equation now I'm going to substitute the value of 15 so 5 times of 15 positive 6 positive root of 5 times uh, it's actually 3 times of 15 positive 4 uh, positive 3 times of 15 3 fives are 15 1 3 ones are 3 4 and uh, 4 and over here this is going to be 5 5 is 25 2 5 ones are 5 6 7 75 positive 6 that is going to give me root of 81 this is going to give me root of 49 now if I were to take the root of 49 I get a 7 root of 81 I get a 9 I add these two things I get a 16 16 is not equal to 2 so m is equal to 15 is not a solution but there might be some people who would say hey you just wait why not I do the following root of 49 can also be negative 7 I take root of 81 to be as positive 9 9 added with negative 7 gives me 2. So 2 is equal to 2. So left hand side is equal to right hand side. So m is equal to 15 is indeed a solution. This is their contention. But it is absolutely flawed. Why? I will give you the reason why. Now, number 1. When you take the square root of a quantity, the outcome should always be a positive value have this in mind so that means this should always produce a positive 7 and positive 7 alone we cannot take negative 7 
whenever we are taking a square root have that in mind why i have given you the answer because of the very fact that square root is a single valued function first and foremost thing it is a function and above all to add a further layer of protection it is a single valued function now when you say function what does it mean for every x element of capital x there exists only a y element of capital y such that x goes to y that's all that's all nothing else more and nothing else less so this should be the case and not only that we are only talking about x to be element of r plus so only real quantities which are positive in nature so that is important so i have that in mind so in other words how would you how would you take root of negative x that's a basic thing so we are I have a restriction there and we also have a restriction with regard to the square root as a function so have that in mind so i have been cleared that now you might say wow what would you state if i have x squared negative 49 is equal to 0 well this is not a function this is an equation have it in mind so for this equation the factors are x negative 7 and x positive 7 is equal to 0 so there is a lot of minute details that come into play in mathematics very minute very minute and even if we skip one of those we are not going to get at the right solution we are not we are going to be flawed that is a simple uh, simple way to state that so in this case this is not possible now why are we getting this you might be asking me why are we getting this this is there is a term called as extraneous solution okay extraneous roots now what do you mean by extraneous roots now clearly you can see that m x m squared negative 14m negative 15 is equal to 0 is a equation now how did we get it actually you see huh? a series of stages have been experienced by the original system so that means a uh, transformations are taking place right so many transformations are taking place now there is a say now suppose uh, say uh, a dog bites a man right a dog there is a dog say this is a dog okay okay i drew the dog well this is a dog and it goes and it bites a man right it goes and bites a man now this story is passed on to several layers of people now finally when it reaches the final person say imagine this person is the 10000th uh, person this per- this story this story where a dog has bitten a man as it passes through these stages finally it will end up that the man bites the dog right because the dog started to speak with him or the dog started to quarrel with him okay so what am i trying to tell you there is a sequence of adulteration taking place even for a minuscule thing called a story but to avoid that there is a term called as extraneous roots in mathematics so what does that mean it means whenever the original equation is transformed you should be prepared to encounter these roots okay now in the event of time i actually wanted to show you all two other methods but i feel that i would like to wrap up with this particular method this is a very important one uh, let me just show you now imagine you have this 5x positive 6 positive root of i i this, this is the same question okay this is the same question so there's no change in this question at all this is a question that has been given and uh, I, i'm just using the same question now a major thing 
just look at this this is a function this is a function if you were to look at this if and draw this function this is actually an increasing function it will it will go somewhere like this this is an increasing function now if you were to draw this this is also an increasing function now this would a uh, little bit go a little bit beyond i suppose so and we have got a point what is the point we have found at x is equal to negative 1 okay so this will go like this okay fair enough so there is one intersection here okay there is there is there is an intersection at this particular point now this is an intersection which is taking place this is a root because we have located m is equal to negative 1 this is a root now my main point is this this is an increasing function function increasing function you see the graph this is an increasing function the graph doesn't go below have that in mind there is no way that the graph is going down and there is so in other words we are not taking any values of x beyond this point that is the first observation the second observation is both these functions are increasing and these two functions are are strictly increasing and they have to be equal to 2 and if these two functions have to meet say function function 1 and function 2 if they ought to meet they will meet only at one point only at one point and that one point is given as m is equal to negative 1 there is no way that these two functions are going to be meeting at another point it is impossible so that is why m is equal to negative 1 is the solution for this question i hope you understood the concept students thank you so much have a wonderful day